just a second. Trying to hide something that popped up on my screen. Okay, welcome to the South Cravens Road Hazardous Road Overtopping Mitigation Project community meeting. We're a little bit late getting started. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. I'm the project manager. My name is Bert Gidry. Uh, also with us today is Rich Diot. He's the design engineer with Diot Inc. If at any time you want to get project updates, we have a QR code here. You can scan that. There's also a project website link shown below. So kind of a general location of the project would be east of Loop 820 between Eastbury and Wilbarger, just west of Lake Arlington. Here's Lake Arlington over here. Project locations here. Wilbarger down here. Barry's not quite shown, but it's up here. Uh, more specifically, the project will be on South Cravens Road between Baylor Street and Oakdale Street. One thing I wanted to discuss a little bit today, uh, currently, if you've driven by the site in the last few months, you might have noticed that the road has was blocked with some barricades or barriers, or maybe you noticed that the the barricades or the barriers were kind of along the side of the roadway. Um, the city's placed these barriers out there to close this section of the roadway at the culvert crossing, but it's not the result of current flood dangers or the upcoming construction. It's due to the current condition of the bridge culvert, which is structurally unsound. Um, so to reiterate, the roads closed due to the unsafe bridge is not related to the flooding or proposed construction. And the barriers and barricades, they keep getting moved. So we, we would urge you to not use the section of the roadway to, because the bridge is unsafe. So, Are you still there? I think we lost you. At our technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> To reiterate, please do not use the section of the road. The bridge is unsafe. Um, engineers have evaluated the condition of the bridge culvert and uh, determined that doing intermediate repairs just to fix the existing culvert is not feasible. So what's gonna happen is if this culvert will be replaced with the construction of the, of the uh, hazardous road overtopping mitigation project. So here we can see some pictures of the existing culvert. You can see the this is from the inside of the culvert. The the walls of the culvert are severe, severely cracked. Um, here you can see from the outside, this is the the wall and the bridge slab here. There's a gap there. It's not fully supported. On the inside of the culvert, um, there's there's severe undermining of the culvert. This is the bottom slab and you can see there's a pretty large gap there underneath the culvert. So it's been undermined and, and it's unsafe. So once again, the, the road closure is unsafe. Please do not use this. It's not related to the flooding or the proposed construction project. And 
please uh, don't use this section of roadway and, and uh, please don't move the barricades out there. So this is a more close up view of the project limits. You can see here's Baylor Street, Oakdale Drive. We're gonna be doing uh, South Cravens Road between these two limits, including the intersections. You can see here's the floodplain boundary um, right here and down here. And you can see that it crosses Cravens Road and during intense rainfall events, it overtops the roadway. So recently, in the last couple of years, we've had two, uh, two incidences where vehicles were washed off the roadway. Um, one of them was with a, a fatality. The other person was fortunate to get out of the vehicle. Um, over here on the left, you can see an image of the most recent incident. And on the right, you can see an image of the vehicle that was abandoned in the creek. So ways that we're going to, going to mitigate the stormwater overtopping the roadway one thing we'll do is we'll construct culvert improvements. Uh, the existing culvert out there is a double barrel, eight foot wide by six foot high culvert. We're going to remove that and replace it with a seven barrel, 10 foot high, uh, wide by nine foot high culvert. And we'll also add erosion protection at the culvert. And we're going to raise the roadway profile to get it uh, above the elevation of the floodplain. And we'll also include an underground storm drain for the roadway drainage. Uh, those will all be for uh, stormwater improvements. Other improvements will also have new sidewalks, and we're going to replace the uh, the water line at this location and add street lighting. So this shows an aerial view of the project. Here in blue is the the creek center line, and right here is the culvert location, the double barrel, eight foot wide by six foot high culvert. Oakdale Drive and Baylor Street here shown. So this shows the uh, proposed culvert. You can see it's a lot bigger. You got seven barrels and it's a lot wider. Uh, over here on the lower right, down here is the existing roadway profile. And up here is the proposed roadway profile. And you can see the extent of the uh, new, new uh, culvert crossing. So the uh, the new roadway profile, you can see it's several feet higher than the existing. So that will help to keep it out of the floodplain. This kind of shows the uh, paving improvements in gray would be concrete pavement that would be added. Um, at, the, at each end, we'll have asphalt transition pavement going tying back into the existing roadway. Um, sidewalk right here on each side of the roadway along the concrete paved sections. And here's the uh, proposed culvert as well. Since the street is the curb, we're gonna have curb, curb inlets right here shown in red. Those are gonna connect to an underground storm drain system on both sides, and that's gonna connect to the culvert. Also, we will be replacing the, the water line here with a new water line. This shows a typical section. Uh, this is at the a, a section cut at the uh, culvert crossing, the proposed culvert crossing. Here you can see this will be concrete pavement. We're gonna have curbs, and then we're gonna have sidewalk, five foot sidewalk on each side. Uh, here's the head wall for the culvert, and we will have handrails along there at the culvert. Here's the um, proposed or anticipated project schedule. We expect to complete design in the fall of this year and then bid the project and award it in the winter 2023-24, starting construction in the spring of 2024. And we expect to complete con construction in the winter of 2025. One thing that could affect the schedule, we are in the process currently of, of obtaining right away an easements for the project. So we won't be able to bid that until we get those. Um, like I said, we are in the process of doing that. So hopefully we can get those and not affect the schedule, but it could be something that would delay things a little bit. Funding for the project is from stormwater revenue bonds and the estimated construction costs, 3.4 million. 
This kind of shows the detour route since the road would be closed. Actually, it currently is closed, uh, although the barricades keep getting moved. But this shows the detour route northbound. Uh, it's not too bad. You go, go north and, and then go around to Oakdale, take the service road back up, and then Grayson back east. Southbound is a little bit more complicated. You'd have to uh, cross at East Berry Street and then take the frontage road south all the way down to Will Barter and then back up. Now we can go ahead and take any questions you might have. I have one question. Can you tell me, do we know how many homes are involved? How many homes? Can you be a little bit more specific in, in what you mean by that? Houses, where people live, how many houses will be impacted by this construction? Well, the road closure will affect, you know, basically anyone who would use that road. So all the, uh, any homes who travel that, any, any people living in homes that travel that route will be affected. Um, as far as the, back up here. I think we talked about the spark being more industrial, correct? I think that's. So it's more companies than 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 how than homes. Well, there there are there are people living on the south side here and, and on the north side. So there are some homes that would be affected by the detour. As far as the actual construction, uh, there's no homes directly on the project limits. So it would, would really be. I'm sorry, that's not that's not true. Um, there's a property right there that. Um, the whole 11 and a half acres that you're working with that street line from that one street to the other, there's a property owner. You're right. Miss, Miss Williams right here is a property owner um, and she has two driveways that we will um, stagger the construction and keep one of those driveways open. Lauren, can, can we do door hangers to make sure everybody possibly impacted by this will know what's coming because we know not everybody is on the call, but it, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be a big number, but we'd hate for someone to wake up one day and kind of be in the in the dark on what's what's going on and how long it's gonna take. Okay, sure. Yes, ma'am. Our standard practice, I believe, is 72 hours in advance and then 24 hours in advance of, of impacting anyone, but we'll make sure we get a flyer or a door hanger out to those those folks as well. Okay, and I'll put it on my Facebook and do you know whatever it needs. I'll, I'll contact the churches and make sure they know too. Thank you. Also, we will have on this project before construction starts. Linda, I can barely hear you. Is this better? Not really. I heard also. While we're waiting for Linda, did someone else on the call have questions for Bert? I have questions with access to my property. I have, I have questions about that, um, which is a major concern of, do I have to ask people doing this whole two years to be able to come in and out of my property? Um, I'm concerned about the privacy. I'm concerned about trespassing. I'm concerned about even the trasp trespassing from the contractors, the laudering, um, et cetera, once you open up um, and work on this on the roadway. Um, those are major concerns for me. You're taking down uh, um, the trees for privacy. You will not be replacing them. Um, I, I'm one to make sure what am what how am I going to be impacted this entire two years um, of your construction being able to go in and out and the workers, uh, etc. What's so, your address? 
Ms. Williams, what's your address? 4201 South Cravens. You'll okay. see the, uh, which is the majority of the roadway here. You see, okay. That's, yes, yes. Gotcha. I'll be driving by. Thank you. So, Ms. Williams, one thing we had, we, we've been in touch with you, um, and we're working with you on, on a lot of your questions. Uh, we will. You, you uh, have not answered them, though. I've been asking, and this is um, a great concern of, of that. Uh, how am I going to ask everybody every day um, to, to come inside and leave my friends, my colleagues, neighbors? How am I going to be able to access? What about the, my security? This is a vast place. Um, so I want to feel safe. I want my property to be safe. I don't want to have to ask anyone to be, can I, can I come inside and leave? Um, uh, my privacy, um, you're taking down all of my trees. Um, the fence line is going to be gone. Um, and I'm having to find the contact contractors to replace these things. Um, it's a major concern. I understand. Um, so we will be putting temporary chain link fence with uh, screening on it during the construction um, to keep people out and for privacy. Um, we will phase the driveways construction so that you would have access to them. We might have to work out the details you know, coordinate, co coordinating that with you as we go forward. As far as the trees, um, I, I guess as part of, of your agreement for the easements, we'll have to work that out on, on how the trees will be uh, mitigated. I ask why I'm understanding. I keep getting very vague um, information and it's really in dire important, especially for this neighborhood. Lauren, why don't we set up a meeting with Ms. Williams, either in my office or on her property? I'd rather be on her property because when I hear trees being taken down, usually we replace what we take away, but I would like to have a, a real thorough understanding. So I can get Josh to call your team, Laura, so we can schedule a meeting at her property, if that's okay with you, Ms. Williams. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. So if at any time you do have questions that come up, uh, here's my phone number and my email. You can call me or email me. Also here again is the QR code uh, and the and the uh, website for the, and the link for the project website. And also uh, wanted to point out that uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can uh, as far as reporting things to the city of Fort Worth, there's the uh, my Fort Worth app that you can add to make uh, reporting things um, quicker and simpler. So with that, if there's no more questions, uh, we can adjourn the meeting. I'll meet me at MLK meeting. to hear about the Stop 6 Hub. We start at 10 o'clock at MLK to talk about the Stop 6 Hub and the swimming pool and everything to come. That's a plug. Thank you. All right.